Hello, my name's Mike the Fish, and today I've got a uh, build video for you about um, a different kind of tank than most people are bringing. So most people bring a Guardian to um, to raids. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. It does reasonable damage, tanks pretty well, and has a nice nice element of uh, team support. Uh, the build I like to bring to raids as a tank is a necromancer build and what's this do uh, different from the guard it survives a lot better it damages a lot better what it doesn't do is provide any sort of help to your team um, so that's the trade-off if you're um, if your raid is having trouble with damage this might be a good build for you if you're having trouble surviving there's various different things you can add to like up your survivability but essentially you will live a lot easier on this than you will on a tank guardian so what have we got for weapons we've got dagger warhorn switching to greatsword and we've got your soul is mine we've got spectral armor signet spite spectral glasp and chill to the bone so obviously spectral grasp and chill to the bone are for um, CC. Uh, some some of you might try uh, might have tried uh, breaking break bars with uh, flesh golem. Uh, I prefer uh, chill to the bone, uh, just because this enables you to um, do a stun that also stops nearby seekers from getting onto you. Um, so it has a sort of double utility to it, um, which is kind of kind of nice. Um, also inflicts chilled as well, which is uh, important for tanking, which is nice as well. So there's a sort of double use there, and this skill is, uh, does very a lot to break bars, so that's a very nice skill. Um, uh, so that's the weapons and skills. So for gear, we have essentially full cavaliers. I've got some exotic stuff here, um, but. You know, a couple of ascended rings and then mostly exotic agate jewels I think are the best uh, jewels to put on exquisite agate jewels are the best to put on um, cavalier uh, cavalier uh, um, trinkets you can get these from um, one of the temples in ore um, you can just buy them with uh, buy them with karma so that's a very nice way of getting some reasonably cheap gear and then cavaliers gear Cavalier's weapon. Uh, the rune set I've gone for is the rune of the scrapper. I'm considering swapping this out for an even more damagey rune set, um, but for the time being, I quite like that damage reduced by seven percent when six six hundred units. Uh, that does a lot of a lot for your survivability. Um, uh, sigils of force and accuracy on the weapons. Um, I could go for sigil of air instead of sigil of accuracy I might swap that out eventually um, just because your crit chance is never a problem with this uh, so that's the gear so for traits there are three ways um, you can spec out uh, this tank um, the first way is full damage reaper um, anyone who plays damage reaper should be familiar with the setup because it's basically the same as a full damage uh, spec for so you're getting all your survivability from um, from your gear as opposed to any of your traits. Um, so I'll go through that one first. I'll do the the common trait lines in uh, in all <coughs> in all the builds first. So that's soul reaping and reaper. We've got shroud skills, uh, pierce, and cause vulnerability. Life force drains slower. Obviously, you need that as a tank. Increase critical uh, hit chance while in shroud. So, most reapers will be familiar with the combination of using dip depth perception and decimate defenses to up your crit chance from basically nothing to almost permanent most of the time, and that's what allows you to take the cavalier's gear. So, that's the combo. That's the important combo that you have to keep in this build. Um, so in Reaper, we've got uh, reduce the recharge of shouts. Uh, this is really important, even if you decide not to take this for the heal skill. This heal skill has an 18 second recharge, and it's I'll explain how I work around this while I'm tanking a bit later on. But 
Having that as an 18 second recharge is very important. Also a little bit of life siphon, never hurts. Um, Decimate defense as I already mentioned, and Reaper's Onslaught. Big damage increase because your attack speed is um, considerably higher. And for your full damage spec, when you really trust your healer to keep you alive, or when survivability isn't a problem, uh, deal increased damage to foes with no boons. More damage, always good. Constantly imply uh, vulnerability to nearby foes while in Shroud. This isn't so much for the Veil Guardian when he's in one piece, but um, when he splits, and it, particularly if you're doing the strategy where you drag the green over to the blue and you kill them both at the same time, uh, staying in Shroud for a little while will um, proc vulnerability on both of those bosses very quickly. So that's particularly if you spam uh, the skill one in Shroud to get a lot of vol out very quickly on the on the split bosses. Um, that helps get those two down a lot faster um, because not necessarily the other characters in your team won't necessarily have a quick way to apply lots of vulnerability, and you do. Um, and then increased damage to uh, enemies below the health threshold. So when you're below 50%, it's all about Grave Digger. You'll be wanting as many use as many grave diggers as you possibly can um, to make use of this trait. Yeah. So that's the damage spec. Now I'll talk about a slight switch out you can make to increase your survivability a lot, um, while still keeping very high um, damage numbers. So we're going to put in death magic. And we're going to go for a take less damage from poisoned foes. If you have a Condi in your um, in your group, this this should be a, a very nice damage reduction most of the time. I, I actually spoke to the engineer in my reigning party, and I got them to swap out their sigil of geomancy for a sigil of doom, which uh, procs long-lasting poison when they switch 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 out their kits, which is very handy for this. Um, Keep the keep the boss poison to keep that damage reduction on you. Then uh, for the major traits, we've got, and this is what allows you to run this death line and still keep up your damage a lot. Uh, gain power based on your toughness, and it's doubled while you're in shroud. So 14%. It's an enormous quantity uh, of power you gain back based on your toughness because you're running this cavaliers setup. Um, you, you just get a, a lot from that. Uh, and then the Grandmaster. There's a little bit of dealer's choice here. Um, I like to run only Unholy Sanctuary. This gives you like a a free go into death round and survive. Um, and a little bit of healing when you're in Shroud, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, there is an alternative to this, and... If you're confident about your shroud management, you might want to pick this. Inflicting a condition on a foe grants a stucking, stacking toughness and reduces incoming condition damage by 2%. Incoming condition damage, not important obviously, um, but the stacking toughness. You can get another 300 toughness from this trait if you stack it right. When you're in shroud, your skill 1 does vulnerability. Um, when uh, it does an extra vulnerability um, because of this trait here. Also, the skill 4 in Shroud uh, flicks a lot of poison. That's a very quick way of getting this uh, stacked up to basically 10 almost instantly. It's using the skill 4 in, in Shroud. So decide what you like out of these two. This gives you the fail safe. It also regenerates health while you're in, in Shroud and the opposite way around um, otherwise. This technically, I'd say, is better because you're, all your toughness you're creating, you're also converting to power, of course. So that's that bonus. Uh, so this is the sort of middle of the road survivability that still has a lot of damage to it. Um, spec for the tank. So the full on, I might die. I'm going to drop some damage and survive no matter what happens spec is using swapping out death magic for blood magic and here what you want to do is you want to take 
Um, either quickening thirst, it's up to you because you do have a dagger. Um, or you can take uh, create a well of blood when reviving an ally. I wouldn't recommend reviving so much as a um, as a tank because you don't want to put people in a situation where the boss is on you and they're attacking the person you're reviving. But what you can do is you can start reviving someone you see and then back away. So this creates the well of blood and then it just heals um, it heals you and them and anyone else trying to actually res them, regardless of whether you keep uh, you keep resing them. So that's a nice trait to have there. Uh, vampiric Presence. This gives a unique aura which siphons health um, to everyone who who is near the boss. So that's that's a very nice um, thing to do. It does increase your damage, uh, your team's damage a little bit, but overall, because you're dropping this damage line, it's still very much just to survive this this uh, one. And there's a little bit of dealer's choice here as well. Uh, so wells siphon uh, health every time they pulse and grant protection to ally. I don't have any wells in the build right now, but if you were to run this bloodline, you would swap out this for Well of Suffering and this for Well of Corruption. So why am I not using the heal? Um, I'll explain later why this heal is just the best heal um, by far. Uh, but these two wells do a lot of damage um, and through this trait they they siphon health so you can siphon a lot of health just by putting these down um, and they do a reasonable damage it pulls up this bloodline to a lot closer to death and, and soul reaping um, not quite not quite there but a lot closer um, so yeah and then the other option is transfusion a shroud skill for heals and partially revives nearby allies um, the partially revive thing is nice I guess uh, the the thing you have to watch though is the teleporting so if someone dies within 600 and you teleport them it, onto you you're going to pull them right underneath the boss you just need to be very careful when you use this um, that you're only healing yourself and nobody is downed and nobody is you're not pulling anyone into mortal peril um, but generally speaking I like to use this with the wells um, so that's the full survival So I mentioned earlier there was a kind of knack to um, tanking. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Um, it's based around uh, the heal skill, your soul is mine. So your heal skill has a very low recharge. It's on 18 second recharge and it does 4.5k heal um, and it regenerates life force. Um, and you might think, well, if you're on the blood build, use the well of, um, use the well of blood. but this heals low recharge, combined with the comparable numbers, I mean initial self heal, you know, that gets up to something in the region of what you can do with this. But the low recharge um, allows you to work a very specific way when you're doing your skills. So you take a bit of damage, you use your heal skill, you go into shroud. But before you go into shroud, you pop locust swarm. This thing allows you to stay in Shroud a bit longer and obviously because it generates life force that it hits. Um, obviously it increases damage, increases speed and cripples as well but that's uh, not important with this particular thing. You only stay in your Shroud as long as like most of this cooldown is down. And then you come out, you pop your Spectral Armor you take more damage, you use your heal again, and you go back to your shroud, and so on and so on. Um, so the idea is you take damage, um, use your heal, shroud, take damage in shroud, regenerate, and you know, if any healing comes in you, then it'll top up your heal bar, um, and then come out of shrouds. You don't stay in shroud just uh, using your whole uh, death shroud bar because you will need this for emergencies. Um, what I find is I tend to work between three quarters and a quarter most of the time. 
Um, and there are some things you can do to regenerate this. So this skill here um, is primarily used as your CC, but very important to notice that you gain a lot of life force using that skill as well. So if you desperately need life force and you know maybe your team's got the CC sorted out and maybe a risky decision, but you know you can make your own mind up whether you think that's worth it or not. 15%, that's a lot. In Death Shroud, you have two skills which can work very well against CC. You have Terrify, which is a fear, and then you have a one and a half second stun on Executioner's Strike. Um, that's those two things you should only use if you are currently in Death Shroud. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, when you get to the CC part of the boss, try and use your other CCs first: the Spectral Grasp and the Chill to the Bone. And Whale of Doom. This is a very this is very good CC against Break Bar. Um, try and use those before uh, before anything else, um, because it's really important you keep up the rotation of healing and death shroud um, to maximize you know, minimize the chance of yourself going down. Uh, you shouldn't really have any trouble with this, but like once you get into the habit, you'll see how the the sort of general flow of the build works, and it works very well. At keeping your damage up and not not dying, not even getting close a lot of the time, particularly if your heal is any good. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's that's the general advice for how to, how to run it. Obviously, the movements and stuff like that is another matter entirely. But um, if you need a heal, you can use uh, Siphon Health to give yourself a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra health. Uh, that works particularly well with the blood. Um, magic, but it works just as well without it. You know, it's it's fine. And the auto attack and dagger is obviously very powerful. This can be used on break bars as well. Not not as powerful as Whale of Doom, but uh, you will note with this, you will do a lot more damage than any Guardian tank. Um, Guardian tank can do. And why is that? Well, like the crit damage is a lot higher than any Guardian tank build because they have to swap out. Ferocity, and we don't. We get a free stat, a free precision stat uh, from it, uh, from our traits. You know, the, the whole uh, depth session decimate defenses, which just allows us to bring toughness, ferocity, precision, and power essentially. Um, so that's why this is very good, in my opinion, for raids. So important to mention the food you need to run with this build. Um, the food I'm running is spicy marinated mushroom. This stuff is really expensive. Um, it's quite a lot, but it's really worth it. Um, it's by far the best thing you can use for this. Um, worth mentioning, it's an hour long as well, so uh, you know, calculate that with, with regards to the amount of money you're spending. Um, and then this, furious sharpening spoon. Uh, spoon. Furious Sharpening Stone. Um, this is by far the best utility food for this build. You've got a ton of toughness and you're converting it into ferocity. Um, make these. If you are a tank, you should be using this. You will get so much damage out of this consumable. Um, uh, now this, you know, there are a few different options for this food. Um, some little bit cheaper options, but this you absolutely positively need. It will enormously increase your damage. It's it's a, essentially a ten percent damage increase, um, uh, and you know more survivability as well. So it's just it's insane. Uh, you need this. Get this. I think I've made my point clear now. And one more thing, potentially the most important thing of all, um, there's a graphic setting called post-processing. Um, if I have this on, the screen goes a weird shade of green when you're in uh, death shroud mode. And when you have it off, uh, in six seconds, I can demonstrate this. When you have it off, it does not. So why is this important? Seeing skill effects 
and dodging skill effects in raid are is absolutely paramount. Um, so really important to have this turned off because that green shade can really mess with your with your movements and your tanking. So there's that. It's also worth noting that this has worked in the first boss, the Veil vale Guardian. Um, I've not had a chance to try this or against uh, later later bosses and, and not really sure how it worked there. Um, but this is mostly for the Veil vale Guardian, so uh, just get that disclaimer out of the way. Uh, so that was my uh, my necromancer tank uh, for raids build. Uh, thanks for watching. Tell a friend.